Welcome back to Sailing Ruby Rose from the Saigon Shipyard. Now today we are doing a comparison between our boat, Ruby Rose 2, hull number 2 and hull 1. Despite the fact these boats look the same, they are very, very different inside. So let's jump on board with Mike Reese, the European Marketing Manager, and have a good chat with him. Michael, I'm going to just let you talk because I talk too much. Off we go. Okay. Right, so hull one, obviously just about to go and, and be launched and be shipped out to the US. This customer in particular is electing to do their own uh, navigation screen here. So what will be going in is a, a Dell widescreen computer monitor, and then that'll go through and get connected through the chart plotters. So we're seeing that as a popular option that's, that's happening. So one thing that's, you know, we, we spent a lot of time is making sure we've got the ergonomics right here and very happy with the way that's all panned out. So this is a proper office grade chair, right? So nice and comfortable for laptop use, but then you can see out and see the, you know, all four corners of the boat from here. Another question, uh, someone's yeah. asked, this, this comes to one of our patrons, is there gonna be a two strut option for the windows at any point? We have been looking at it. Uh, we haven't got it on the cards yet, we're just never focusing on other things. Exactly, exactly. Never never. So, so, a fairly, so a fairly blank canvas here, yeah. and then we've got over this side, we've obviously got our uh, Easy View 5 monitor, which is standard boat equipment. Yeah. Uh, this boat's got lithium, so all the lithium uh, displays up here. And then you've got your 24 volt and 12 volt. So this is your DC panel. We're seeing quite a mix of people going for the uh, C zone, uh, which would have a, a display panel here. The C zone functionality you get, the bit that I like, it's a little bit techy, is the ability to see every little bit of amperage going through on every circuit and it comes up on the screen i think that's really really helpful when you're on a boat yeah, so. yeah absolutely so dc panel here yeah. and then we've got our ac panel uh here this boat being a 110 panel uh, 110 boat sorry and all the battery controls here pretty straightforward so just to also iterate there's no solar on this boat so there's no solar correct yes yeah. so the customer wants to do their own solar when it arrives in the u.s fine so we'll obviously go on to reverse to and discuss solar and output and all that other stuff because there's a lot of questions that we'll have and we will deep dive into 24 volt systems and the the, the, the ability to live off grid based on sea winds specifications right sure right, yeah we'll do yeah. that in a bit yeah okay um galley mike let's just i'm gonna stand out of your way and i'm gonna let you talk the base boat has the granny coat surface finish here, which we've got here. This is a product that we've used for many years at Seawind. It's a it's a composite bench top that we make in house, and it's a it's a one piece molded part. Very nice. On this boat, we've got optioned up is to have the LPG burners plus the induction cooktop. And I think most people these days with big lithium banks, big solar, are looking to be able to use induction cooktops as well, trying to be self sufficient. Here, the customer's doing their own oven, but in here we can put in an electric oven, microwave oven from Bosch. I mean, this is very much the standard boat here. We've got um, dual sinks. Uh, this boat's got the through-hole discharge. The optional Russian vomit tunnel. Exactly, the, uh, the, the puke shoot, as it was coined, <laughs> uh, on sea trial when we had some uh, rather unwell people. But actually, that's, that's a very nice setup to be able to put sort of food, food waste down there if needs to be, or yeah. anyway. And that's that's just going straight through the secondary sink outlet. So there's yeah. a there's a catch pot in there, and then you pull a tray out, and then it goes straight through. Yep, yep, yep. You've now got this rack. You know, having gone out and used the boat, we're just trying to work out how we get a bit bit more functionality. So this is useful for, you know, spices, whatever it is, storing any any other loose items. We the can spices put spices there. there, and you've also got another spice rack. Right? Yeah, there's there's we've just tried to maximise the storage. The mission was coming back. It's like right, okay, what can we do to improve? There is a discussion about wood. We always talk about wood, you and I. Yeah, indeed. Do so you want to talk about your wood? <laughs> I'll talk about the boat's wood. So we're just talking about doing a different surface finish for the main saloon table as, a, as an optional item. We've got some maple that we've been working through and just got a test piece uh, in the wood shop at the moment. And I what? think that's going to work very well. So we've got ash as the standard setup, but we're, we're just looking at a few different options. That the optional that. boats are. Yeah, yeah look, exactly. The headlining panels are being changed in subsequent boats. We are, yeah. We're just sort of simplifying that a bit. I, I'm actually a fan of these headlining. This is what we had in our original renders, and I think they I think they look good, but we're just trying to make it simpler and just less panels, less uh, upholstery work. And there. the wood is oil coated. It's not varnished, Correct. right? So Correct. Yeah. Um, I think we discussed the fact that you're changing you're, the you're, catches so that you don't get fingerprints on the wood with time. Exactly, you're right. So, and going to a, a, a satin finish as well. Yeah. Straight okay. finish. Right, yeah. no okay, what do you want to see now? Bedrooms? Well, one thing that actually people, I don't think people often see is, have seen, is we've got pretty decent storage up on the top here as well. 
on a gas strut. You're requesting to put in a, a GPO because you've got a lot of equipment you want to well, store and, and charge up here. We are running an HDMI lead from our television yep. so we can edit on that um, effectively using a laptop. Yep. Put a GPO in there and I think we're going to get some ventilation holes drilled just to get yeah. everything cool. So that will be where we store our batteries and things. It's actually a really important thing. Storage of and location of where you charge things and ventilation is critical. There's been a whole series of issues about lithium batteries on boats and insurance and things like this. And actually, when we talk to the Marsfold guys, they were citing a number of cases where there had been fires on boats with lithium batteries, but it was actually where people were charging lithium battery powered items such as you know, electric scooters. It's giving us a sort of bad name for lithium batteries in general. Yep. If you've got a lot of stuff that you're storing with little lithium batteries, you need to make sure you've got a de designated place where it's got good ventilation. I mean, the best thing is to actually store it out in the open. If you're gonna put it in here, then we need to make sure we've got some good vents happening so you've got plenty of airflow in there. This is standard setup. So there's plenty of people that are not taking a TV option, which does go in here, and we'll see that on your boat. But basically, the TV comes up on a uh, on a pneumatic RAM if you go for the larger size TV. But but essentially, this is the base boat as it is, and then we have the an optional TV that comes up on a RAM. I think whole five or seven is doing a full IMAX surround sound thing that's going to weigh right. about 700 yeah. kilos, probably. All right, fine. Let's just okay. head down to the cabin. Yeah. Storage down here, pantry storage. Now that's all been changed into much deeper shelves. We've managed to get some deeper storage. Yeah. Master cabin, port side. So owner's cabin's the full length of the, the boat on the port side with head to the rear, to the aft. And just come through, we'll start right from the front. Obviously the island bunk, great access both sides. When we did the sea trial, I think you've documented already, we just identified that it was a bit tight coming in to the bunk here. So we've We've changed the step configuration here slightly and just modified it so there's a bit better access up here. Plenty of headroom once you're up, obviously. And we've got the, the headboard there as an addition, which we didn't have previously, just giving a bit of better comfort when you're sitting up in bed. Now, in the forward area here, so we've got this as the walk-in wardrobe. We've got plenty of storage space here with hanging rail. Now, we previously had this as an upholstered uh, mm -hmm. seat as opposed to what well, the customer actually came up with a good idea is he'd like to just run it as a, uh, as a laundry basket so or a linen basket. Now, this boat doesn't have a door, but what you'll see under here is just there's so much storage under this bed here. We've got storage everywhere. You know, the depth of these are, I, mean, I, can't, I can't reach the, the depth of that. This is optional. Uh, there's a, a workstation for those of us that are Correct, yeah. having to work. We've called it a vanity, we've called it a workstation. It's also somewhere you can just come in and you can put stuff down when, you know, it's a bit of a dumping station before you jump into bed or whatever it might be. So this customer's got a, uh, an additional wardrobe here. There's, there is so much storage in this area, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, and quite frankly, if you're filling it all, then, I don't know, it's too much on board, I'd say. Yeah, but uh, shelves, hanging space, hanging space, if we just slide this back. And I do, lo I do love all this, it's just great. So look, yeah, it's so all, all. a fairly isolated, um, self-contained suite. Exactly. For the yep. marital couple. Okay, great. Also, the other thing you'll see in here is we've got um, the ocean air blinds, yep. which are beautiful. I mean, they're obviously privacy, keeping the heat out, yep. very nice. No, it looks amazing. Once this is all dressed and we've got all our bits and bobs in it, it's going to look yeah. fantastic. Very happy, actually. The finishing here is lovely, so very, yeah. very nice. Uh, very, very, very luxurious. Going into the head. Again, lots of storage. Full depth storage in here. Behind the toilet here, we've got another area for storage. There's heaps of storage. Yeah. Can I just confirm that the water maker is no longer living there? They've moved. The water maker them. we're putting up in the sail locker now. Right, yeah, right. that's correct. You can see down underneath, we've got multiple storage underneath the sink and then again further storage behind the door a shower that you can actually sit in you know if you're in rough weather um and obviously the glass door and then you've got the shower here so yeah very very ergonomic sort of setup and then we've got access on a watertight sealed panel just hold it up and that's the the uh the sail dry pick there you've got obviously got your oil change and salt water pickup exhaust system through there so you can access what would normally be the back half of the engine but it's facing the front so we have our engines on the 1370 we have our engines reverse mounted with the sail drive at the front okay starboard forward cabin now lots of storage again i mean the the boat just has storage everywhere these are these are really 
nicely set up for just loose clothing, loose storage. Yeah, I like these. Socks, undies, whatever, t-shirt. It's very easy to put in here. And, and then, then even Teresa could put her stuff away with a bin that literally is next to the bed. <laughs> just, <laughs> just slide it off. There you go. That's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> up here, we've got the, the aft... Half of this is the uh, black water tank from the starboard bathroom. Yeah. But then the forward half, we've got, you know, a hanging rail at this height, so plenty of space, and you can store stuff in the bottom of that. Likewise, we've got, you know, sh shelf storage in here, lots of space, and, and clearly plenty of room to put things on the top here. We've actually got people asking to put USBs here so we can charge things, which I think is fine coming over this side. Hole one, we've got aircon, twin fans. Um, and, and all the sky screen hatches, so full shades. Okay, let's go through to the midship area. So again, storage, sort of pantry storage, we think they'll get used for. We put in these gas struts, so storage up ahead, and then on all of these. But that's yeah. changing on subsequent holes. No? We are, yeah, we've, we've decided, we're just trying to open up some space, and we've actually decided to utilize this space with access from the galley. So this panel now comes down flat so you'll, you'll come across in and you'll still have this recess on the forward section but we've got access from the galley side on hole one actually we've we've done that with a with a panel from the uh from the galley area so he has a, a spice rack but we're just bringing that through further for future builds cool, cool, cool. and that's part of just developing the boat all right and then in here i mean here we've got aircon unit here yep. and then that's just going to be storage yeah uh, starboard side uh, head a washing machine unit in here and we've got a just a bit of a, an organizer that we've put into the base there so we can put a detergent on the left hand side and plenty of space for a linen basket etc. And you'll see also we've got the, uh, the B-Day uh, spray gun. The bum gun. The famous bum gun which makes a lot of sense in that you've got reduction in, in toilet paper on a boat which is always good for in terms of macerators. It also for people who've got salt water toilets when you're stepping off the boat you can um, dry bowl the toilet clear out the, the salt water and then give it a squirt with the fresh water bidet and then flush through some, some fresh water into the system and you're going to get a reduction in the amount of odour that's going to build up because the odour is typically the salt water in the hose where it's just it's building up and uh, all, the, all the little growth that goes on there is, what get, is where you get your smell from not the um, not actually the toilet waste. Storage again, more storage, shower with screen, half cabin. Interestingly the guys are actually just doing some tidy up work here but we've got while it's all open, you can see lots of storage space um, in the area underneath the bunk and access to the engine, starboard side engine. Nice. All right, let's get up and go and look at the cockpit. Now, finally, it's the cockpit. Things I can show you. Uh, talk about this floor matting because we've used it before. Yeah, it's super nice actually. It's infinity vinyl flooring. Yep, I mean, it's, a, it's a foam backed vinyl floor. It's actually beautiful underfoot, right? It's yeah. nice and soft. With this flooring, you've still got the non-skid underneath and you've got a, a, a cut to shape vinyl flooring, press studded around it, but obviously you can then peel it off and, and take it off the boat if you want to. Whereas when you do a flexi teak surface, you actually grind off all of the non-skid and you bond it down, so it's much more permanent. You can jet wash it like lightly, so yep. if you spill olives on it, Teresa, or peanuts on it, Teresa, or red wine on it, Teresa, we can jet wash it out. But secondly, it only weighs about 20 kilos. It's very light, yeah, yeah. Look, the Flexi Teak has a beautiful finish. Yeah, Aesthetically, hey. it looks fantastic. It does retain some heat though, and certainly for the hotter climate boats, then it's probably better to peel away from that and go for something more like this, because this is nice and cool underfoot. But look, it looks amazing, like the entire thing looks yeah. The addition of these pins, I think, is a very clever idea of what on sea wind. Just so to, to, to lock that in, we've got these reversible seats, obviously, coming through. And yeah, so plenty of storage access here. Base boat, empty storage. We also have the ice maker option coming in here, but I mean, it's this, the space is enormous. When you have the ice maker, you've still got space for um, some, uh, some storage on the side there. So just to explain some of the options we've got on this boat, firstly, we've got the, the dual control upgrade, so dual digital controls from Myanmar, which are very nice. I've got to say, very nice to, to use. Real sort of positive feeling when you, click, when you click that into gear. Now, the base boat comes with one set of electric winches and their Lumar. You can upgrade all the winches to Harkin, which this customer's done. Two speed Harkin electric winch. And then this customer's also got the electric line driver. So he has elected to go for an additional control. 
And line driver also known as traveller to... Sorry, traveller control, exactly. The line driver, so it's a, just a motorised uh, driver of the main traveller sheet going across the top of their target. Uh, I need to answer the question, does it have a manual override? It doesn't have a manual override, okay. no. So you're, you're, you're bound by the electric drive and we've got obviously control here, so you've got starboard port as an additional uh, control and then the standard line driver comes with a port side control. Cockpit table, twin leg. So this table actually just comes up, pops out, legs unscrew, and then we've got a dedicated storage space up in the um, mass space locker for the, for the table. Other things I want to pick up on, um, you've changed this panel, so it now yes. looks aesthetically. Yeah, so we've got a timber finish now, just wanting to, just to elevate that finish. We had that as a white finish before, it looked a bit bland, so we've switched that out for this boat and obviously all subsequent boats as well. And we've got some, uh, some cup holders mounted here, yep. How much was a row to get those put on the boat? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been quite a focal point. Yeah, apparently, a focal point. Apparently cup holders are essential. I saw that on the Excel spreadsheet of modifications, it was my name that was accredited to this because I'm the one that's kind oh, of the bollocking well, that you lot get. We can give you the royalties for the cup holders. This, this boat, no barbecue specs, okay? I believe you've got a, uh, one of the Infinity barbecues, correct? Yes. So that comes in, comes in here with a, with a tray underneath. Um, but either way, you've still got plenty of storage underneath here with or without the barbecue. The barbecue comes down to about that sort of level. You've also got access to all the steering gear down there as well. So you, well, not, not all of, but you've certainly got some steering cables that come around and, and then disperse out. So it's a removable floor in there so you can do your maintenance. So what did you think of that supernatural whole one? Let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks to Mike for obviously his very, very precious time in kind of talking us through this amazing boat. In the next episode, we'll be discussing Ruby Rose 2, Hull 2, and looking at those big differences. So give us a like, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and I will see you next week. Take care, goodbye.